Let's go, y'all. Let's go, y'all. You ready? I sure am. We talking about disabilities tonight. Do you have one? Are you unaware? Press one. Let's go. All right, so let's rock it out now. And, and, and it's going down. Yeah, that's right. Dealing with your disabilities, that's right. Yeah, you know it's killing me when you, you can't do the things you used to do or when you never could do everything that everybody could do. It could be a little rough, life is tough, but you go through it and you can't bluff, you can't fool them all the time, but you do your best. You ain't got to fool them, but you know you got to rest. And you got to do your best out here. Everything is going to get real clear in a minute. Yeah. So tonight, tonight on the Daily Go Get a Business Show, we are talking about dealing with your disabilities. Dealing with your disabilities. You know, you may, um, there are plenty of people who are born, born with disabilities, born with handicaps. You know, some people, some people have, um, you know, limitations on their on what they can do physically, and it can sometimes get in the way of certain things that they want to do in in their lives. It can get in the way of traveling. It can get in the way of having fun. It can get in the way of seeming normal compared to everybody else. And those are physical disabilities. Um, but when we start talking about disabilities and handicaps, we also have to start talking about mental disabilities also mental handicaps also so you know um of course there are two sides there are different sides of the of the spectrum and there are two sides to, to every story and um but these are some of the things that we have to deal with in our lives and even if we're not dealing with them personally for our, ourselves which is kind of hard to do when once i get to explain it you know what a disability really is and get deep into it but we may have to look look after and care for somebody else that is afflicted with a disability so you might not have been born with it but you could have had an uh, an accident somewhere later on down the line and it could have been something that restricts you right now so we're going to talk about it and we're going to be down and that's what we're talking about today on the Daily Go Get Amism show. Dealing with your disabilities. How many of us have disabilities? Listen, a disability is, is anything that stops your ability to be able to do something. So just because it may be a temporary thing, like maybe you, you hurt something, broke something, sprained something, damaged something, had an accident, whatever the case may be. If you are unable to restore your body or your mind to, to, to factory settings, if you're unable to do a factory reset to the health that you once enjoyed in your life, then you are afflicted with disabilities. Ain't no big thing, baby. It really ain't. Ain't no big thing. But when we start really getting, getting into what a disability could be, you'll probably start to see that a disability affects a whole lot more of us than the people that we think about. Normally, when we start talking about people with disabilities, we're talking about people who have problems walking. Maybe they can't walk. Maybe they can't reach because they have a uh, problem with their arm. Um, people who wear prosthetic arm or leg or foot or whatever the case may be. You know, um, modern technology has allowed for a lot of people who have disabilities to still be able to do a lot of the normal day to day things that that people who are healthier can do. You know, even people who who um, who may be paraplegic. And I've heard excuse me, I've heard I don't know. Don't quote me on this one. But I've heard that even quadriplegic people can do some things that that people with uh people who don't have any types of uh serious physical disabilities can do like uh for example i've known people who were quadriplegic now if you don't know what quadriplegic is quadriplegic is when you are paralyzed from the neck down like nothing works no arms no legs, no nothing. You are 
basically invalid from the neck down. So in a case like that, you are looking at a lifetime of nursing care. Unless you can somehow, excuse me, excuse me, reverse the effects of your uh, quadriplegia. But what I have heard is that people who are men who are quadriplegic can still get a hard on. Yeah, they can still get a stiff penis. And and guess what else? They can come. It's the weirdest thing. They can't move, but they can lay there and they can get hard and a woman can ride them and and they can have a baby. And some quadriplegic men have had children. It's crazy, but it's true. Now, how how does how does your member work and none of the other muscles and bones work? No other tendons, no other ligaments, no other extremities work. But yeah, I've read about it. I've read it. Matter of fact, I'm I'm gonna look it up right now. I'm gonna look it up right now. I'm ring you. Cause uh, there was this guy, this guy who was, he was a well-known public figure, and he died some years ago. And he had children after he um had become quadriplegic. And he was talking about it. He was like, "Yeah, yeah, the D still working. Nothing else working. Ain't no, ain't no A's working. Ain't no L's working." But the D, yeah, come see me. All right, so let's look it up. Can quadriplegic men still get an erection? According to agingcare.com, yes, they can. You may want to talk to him about that. Some on the forum say to cover the area with a washcloth, maybe a hand towel. <laughs> so basically what, what the computer lady was saying was, yeah, they can get hard, but it's going to be a mess. Yeah, he ain't got no way to control it. He's just going to bust off. It ain't like he could take his hand and be like, oh, my, my bad, babe. I ain't mean to get it on your leg. <laughs> like you got to be, you got to be there like, Hold on, hold on. We're going to try and catch the jaw. We got you. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Oh, uh oh. It's a miracle. It's a, it's a miracle. Anyway, dealing with your disabilities. So, <laughs> okay. Hold on. All right. Uh. Let me see. Let me see. Can quadriplegic still get erections? I'm considering working for a 52-year-old man with home personal care. He became quadriplegic 30 years ago. Some of the duties include bathing, bathroom, grooming, hygiene. I'm wondering if quadriplegic still get erections. And if so, how to handle the situation without causing extra discomfort both for him and myself and still be able to support him as needed. Okay. Two answers. Yes, they can. You may want to talk to him about that. Okay. The same thing the computer was saying. Some on the forum say that some say to cover the um, area with a washcloth, maybe a hand, hand towel. So that means that, that to me, that that's like saying that not only can he get an erection, but then he could, he could, he could bust off like he's masturbating. No hand. Look, no hands, ma. No. Yeah. Okay. Well, bottom line is, yeah. So you can still have a baby. You can still have that baby. Now imagine, imagine getting pregnant by a man that you got to change. 
Like you gotta put, you still gotta put put his you know his diaper on, but nah, I man, you clean him up real good and get busy. He might be a horny little, he might be a little horny quadriplegic devil. But anyway, that's how they're dealing with their disabilities, and we all have disabilities. I'm working with a disability right now. Yo, man, my 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 foot, my foot is messed up. It's messed up bad, son. It's messed up bad. This is how I know it's not broke. But this only means my ankle ain't broke. It don't mean my foot ain't broke. That joint be hurting. But after I walk on it for a little while, it gets better. But then if I walk on it too long, then it gets worse. So that's 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 something we got to deal with. You understand what I'm saying? That's just something we got to deal with. So that's what we're talking about today on the Daily Go Get Emism Show, dealing with our disabilities. You know, you hurt your, if you slam your, your, your finger and, and a door or whatever, you stub your toe, you know, or you, you hit the bed post in the middle of the night, going to the bathroom, you step on a, you step, step on a Lego toy. Yo, you, you could, you could mess around, you know, fall and hurt yourself bad. Next thing you know, you got a disability. You ain't walking right. You ain't walking right. You ain't walking right. You. You <laughs> you know that's it. Dealing with your disabilities. A lot of people try to hide their disabilities. They try to hide their handicaps because they don't think that people will understand. They don't think that people will be supportive. They think that people will laugh at them, ridicule them, make them feel bad about things. You know, it's... It, Listen, man, disability is a disability is anything that stops you from being 100% healthy. It could be anything. Like I said, you know, you you may have been born 100% healthy, all your extremities, everything working good, um sound mind, body and and all of that kind of stuff. But as you know, many people that I know, many people that you know, some have lost their mental faculties over uh, um over the years. You know, uh, how many of y'all wear glasses? I didn't used to wear glasses before 2017. Guess what? I do now and I need them. I can still I can still see the chat from here, but it's not easy. It's not as easy as it was. I used to have very good eyes before 2017. Um I've been told that maybe it's because of um these phones, you know, with the ultra the uh, the UV rays, the harmful you know, computers and things like that. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I can't. I can't say. All I know is that I used to be able to see a lot better than than I do. And my daughter, she's already ready for glasses now. She's only sixteen. I feel some kind of way about that because Yanni could see. She could see shit that wasn't there yet. She used to be like a plane. Like, there ain't no plane up there. Thirty six later, I'm like. I mean, thirty seconds later, I'm like. Yo, she was like, I said a plane, Dad. I, the plane wasn't there. She was like, Yes, it was, Dad. It was over there, though. I'm like, Yo, it's not playing, man. So there are certain things going on, or certain processes that can happen in your life where you won't be able to see as well as you used to, hear as well as you used to. A lot of senior citizens tell me that they don't have the appetite that they used to have before and food doesn't taste the same as it used to they can't all have covid right so as a matter of fact my mom was telling me that the other day she's like you know food don't taste the way it used to you know she's kind of became become disenchanted with eating i mean she used to have like a, a good relationship with food What's going on, y'all? My brother from another mother, Norris Hill, sit back, relax, do your thing, Max and chill, and Mia Cunningham. I thanks for coming on through. Um, uh, glad to see me some you and Stacy White. I thanks for coming through tonight. You know everything will be y'all right. And and Carol Chamberlain, me friend, me favorita. Always great to see ya, no doubt. All right, so let's get a pop of y'all. Urban therapy with Sun Sun Seven Five Two with this your daily 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 daily. The Daily Go Get a Mism Show. We do this every single day, every single day, every day. Every day it rains. Every day it rains. 
and the DG will do the same. We break it down, baby. Every day it rains, and the DG will do the same. Every day it rains, and the DG will do the same. Every day it rains, and the DG will do the same. Every day it rains, and the DG will do the same. I'm your host, Sun752. AKA Omar with the rrr. and if you can't say Omar with the rrr, well then you just say Omar with the art. This is the daily go get a mism show all up in your area. Feeling like a real man should, and I hope y'all feel like real men and women should also. Tonight on the daily go get a mism show, we are talking about dealing with your disabilities. Do you know that having a hoarse voice is a disability? Yeah, we're going to talk about a lot of disabilities that y'all don't really think about on a regular basis. But yeah, your voice is hoarse. It's hard for you to talk, isn't it? That's a disability. It's a handicap. How many of y'all have gotten a hoarse voice and you kind of liked it? You're like, how can I get my voice to stay like this? You can't. And that makes it even more of a disability now, doesn't it? You have no control. And that's the thing about having a disability. It's something that you would normally have control over that you don't have control over. It has control over you. It has control over your processes. It has control over your movements. It has um, um, control over the way that you do things and present yourself. So a lot of people try to hide their disabilities. And I think that that's sad. I think that it's sad that we still live in a society where, where a handicap could make you feel ostracized or that people who witness you having a handicap make you feel ostracized. I don't think that I don't feel good about that. I don't, I don't feel good about that. You know, that back in the day, back in the day, people who had handicaps would wind up as a freak show in the cir- um, in the circus. And that's what they used to call them freaks. So if you were retarded, if you were born with 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 uh, extra extremities and stuff like that, you wound up in the circus as a sideshow act. Oh, come see the the the, the what? How, what would they? What would they say? Uh, the they used to have the bearded lady, the 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 a uh, turtle man, the man like the, the the turtle child or something. Something. What is what what? What side show did they used to have? They used to have a child who had a disability. What do they call him? A turtle, a frog, or a lizard? Was it a lizard man? Y'all know what I'm talking about. But yeah, like people used to really tease people and make people feel bad about having disabilities or having handicaps or having or being born with some type of difference than quote unquote normal people were born with so we're still in a in a society where some some people feel the need to ridicule tease and ostracize people who were born listen man if you were born a certain type of way what are you going to do what are you going to do here's the problem being born with something doesn't doesn't take care of your problem with self-esteem. Just because you don't have the the ability to change something doesn't make you doesn't make a lot of people feel better about it. But we're going to talk about that and we're going to talk about how, you know, you can you can develop a disability. We're going to talk about how people hide their disabilities. We're going to talk about a lot of things dealing with your personal handicaps tonight. From the smallest thing, like talking with a lisp, to something really, really serious, like being born with cerebral palsy. It's a disability. Your inability to be 100% healthy. Wearing glasses. Got a hearing aid. Got to wear one of those shoes that have a platform in it because one leg is shorter than the other. Shout out to all my motorcycle riders out there because there's a lot of people running around here walking with a limp and they ain't pimps or gangsters. They running around here with a limp because they hurt their they they hurt their legs and ankles, you know, in in, in motorcycle accidents. 
and they had to get the surgery and they they had to cut some of the bone out of it well i mean you know um thank god that they are able to still walk at all you know because a, a motorcycle is a motorcycle accident is a very serious accident with a lot of 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 repercussions that can come from that but you know they are able to still walk but they ain't walking like they used to walk and they ain't walking like everybody used to walk look somebody you ever you ha, have you ever have any of you ever known anybody that was seriously bow legged like they got rickets like when somebody has rickets they not regular bow legged like they their legs go like this literally and they be walking like instead of they walking like like they literally just got off of the horse and can't stop it. Okay. Mia says, hey, oh, I watched a man with no lower half drive a car. I was amazed. Couldn't hear what he was saying. I, I was just so thrown back by him driving. Yeah. Yeah, they make cars. They make cars for people who have disabilities. So they have buttons where, where um, gas pedals and brakes would be. But I know they better be paying good attention. Terry Hawkins, hold it down for the D. Every day, all day, 365, 24-7, 12 months out the year. Good to see me some you and my brother Ansel Jones. Always good to see my brother Ansel Jones in the house. What's going on? Yeah, um, Carol says could be involuntary muscular movements. Look, I don't know. A hard join seems voluntary to me. It can be involuntary. Like, I ain't mean to see nobody sexy. <laughs> or when he was a young boy going up to the chalkboard. And you was already lusting after little Latanya. Little Latanya was cuting him up. You going up to the chalk boy hard, hard as hard as as, as Midwest rain. That's stormy weather, twister type thing. Anyway, let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Um, me, it's on my right. I'm trying, I'm trying not to laugh, but oh, it's a mess. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> my brother from another mother, Norris Hill, sit back, relax, do your thing, Max, and chill. What's going on, my brother? What up? Carol said, I need them socks. I knew you would notice that. You know, I mean, you like the you, you know, I mean, you like a sock detective. But I got you though. I do. Mia says I can't function without my glasses. First thing I reach for when I wake up. Yeah, being able to see is a is a um it's a necessary thing. Narsil says Linda Ronstadt lost her voice. Did she? Did she? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Now, and that's a, that was a lot of voice to be losing. I mean, think about it. When they, when it's your career and you lose your voice, it's like, like look at the DOC, the rapper, the DOC. He was in a car accident and he just, by bad luck of the draw, he just, he lost his voice. And you know what a strong rap voice he had before, before he lost it. And it was right after his first album. And it was a hit album. You know the man, you know the doc was a dope album. But yeah. That's um but it it it, it goes to show like you don't have to be born with a disability in order to develop one. But what do you do when you develop a disability? Do you run, hide, cower? Do you do you try to hide it? 
or do you work with it and, and do the best that you can? Because you still got to live your life. See, that's the thing about a disability. You get the disability while you're living your life. You're doing your thing. You're trying to make it happen out here. So it's a, it's a weird thing. But yeah, dealing with your disabilities. Dealing with your disabilities. How do you deal with your disabilities? How do you keep the spirits up of somebody who you're taking care of? How do you keep how do you deal with their disabilities? You know how some parents have tried to shield their children from being teased about their disabilities. Let me tell y'all something, man. I grew up, I grew up um on a block. Uh, a fr friends of mine who lived down the street from me, they, um, I don't know what happened, but two, there were two brothers who went to the same school. They were like a year apart and they were both bald. I don't know what happened to their hair. Something, I don't know. Was it a ringworm that, 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 that went all crazy? I don't know what the case was, but they lost their hair. They were the only two bald kids at Pickett Middle School. Now, I don't, I, listen, I don't know if y'all grew up in the Germantown area for my Philadelphia people, but Pickett Middle School wasn't no joke. It wasn't the worst school, but it was nowhere near the best school. Pickett Middle School was the kind of school that had fights after school every day. Pickett Middle School had a cop that worked in the school. So, you know, to some people, they'd be like, dang, if y'all had a cop in the school, that means it was a terrible school. Judgment call. Judgment call. All I know is that we had good students and we had other students, you know. But so you wasn't going to be no bald head kid at Pickett Middle School and not get teased because you stood out like a sore thumb. <coughs> we didn't have bald kids back in the day. Think about it. It was There was nothing physically wrong with these kids. These two boys, they, they didn't have cancer. They weren't going getting chemo treatments or, or anything like that. You know what I mean? Shout out to anybody who has been through that or has to, to go through that or whatever um, or has taken care of somebody. Y'all know what I'm talking about, but they didn't have those types of physical problems. Whatever, whatever was going on with them and their hair and their heads, it was temporary. But it went on for like a couple of years. So they dad used to take them to school. He used to, they didn't even drive. They dad used to walk them to school every day and dare anybody to tease them near or far. This man was chasing kids. Yo, he was notorious up there, Pickett. Because if you said anything to those boys within his earshot, he was chasing you down. And I, I shudder to think what, what he was going to do if he caught him. Because the man wasn't playing. Since we're talking about disabilities, I'm not so sure he wasn't a little, yeah, I mean, a little touched. He, I'm not sure if he wasn't a little touched from what I know, but he was, that's how he was protecting his kids who had disabilities. Now, maybe y'all might say, um, a bald head is not a disability. It is when you want hair. It is when you see everybody with hair and you sticking out like that. It is when you're trying to get a, a girlfriend and you ain't going to be able to get one till you grow your hair back. It, yeah, it's a problem. It's a problem. And their hair was bald, bald. They had other children in that family. Nobody else was bald, just those two. I don't know what was, man, when I think back, and one of them has hair now. When he, you know, as after he grew up, he grew his hair back. But their dad was, was doing everything within his power to shield them from being teased. And you may have had to done that with somebody in your family or a friend of yours that you didn't want, want to feel bad, ostracized or, or neglected because they got teased because they had a 
disability. I'll never forget that. That was that was the craziest thing. It really was. So, yeah, you might not have been born with a disability, but once you get a disability, you got to deal with a disability. You know what I'm saying? It's something you got to deal with. So how's you dealing with it, son? You know what I mean? How's you dealing with that disability you got? Well, some kind of way you're going to have to work it out. We all have crosses to bear. Some kind of way you're going to have to work it out, work it in, make it work. But we're here to talk about it tonight. So what y'all got? What are some common disabilities that y'all have? What is what are some 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 ailments that you have that maybe you don't look at as being disabilities, but I don't know. We can see if they qualify. Queen Monica Davis, Queen Matu Mayini, what's going on, my good to see me some. Let me see. Let me see. Dealing with your disability. Dealing with your disabilities. Okay, let me see. Uh, let's see. Ansel Jones said, okay, wait. Stacy White says, Disabil dis disability people have families too. Disability people have babies too. I was very amazed. Well, yeah. Um, it, it depends on your um um your disability. You know, I mean, there are levels to this thing. Nara says, I hate that Angela Bofield had that aneurysm. She did something. She did something for me. I'm on your side when times get rough and you need some understanding. I'm on your yeah yeah dance the both <laughs> Queen Monica says I don't hide it it's difficult to have an an invisible one that you can that you can feel but no one can see yeah I stay positive say what's next and find and find my purpose Pound rare disease, autoimmune myositis. Serious stuff. Myositis. Myositis is not uh, an ailment or disease that a lot of people know about. People know about ALS. People know about MS. People know about muscular dystrophy. Those are popular ones. Even when, even, isn't a what's Lou Gehrig's disease? Isn't that a form of ALS? Anyway, people know about these diseases. They know about these conditions. Myositis is is one that a lot of people don't know about, but it's just as debilitating and as serious as as the the other ones that are more well known. And it's something we have to deal with. And and and, and, and it's rough dealing with them. It's hard, it's hard seeing somebody that you know was was totally healthy before doing all kinds of healthy people things and then all of a sudden they're not able to do the things that they used to be able to do and you want to still do them those things with them and you you want you know you're trying to keep their spirits up at the same time you're worried about their health because when you're talking about a a, a condition that affects your muscles you know you have to you have to take into consideration all of the organs in your bodies are a form of muscles. So you're talking about your heart, you're talking about your lungs and your liver and your kidneys and all that kind of stuff. And all of those things get affected by that. So it can be scary. You know, there are life threatening um, mortal consequences to not getting the treatments that you need, let alone worrying about how other people are going to see you. So it can be so many, so many things coming at you and so many, so many different emotions. Your emotions is a muscle, too. It's not. It's actually not, but it should be. Because sometimes you, when your mo how, okay, then if your muscles, I mean, if your emotions not a muscle, how come they be sore? 
Answer me that. Y'all ain't got an answer right now. Y'all ain't got an answer right now, but I need answers. Cal Chamberlain says, when I got sick a few years back, I was told I may not walk the same way. I said, nope, not going to happen. So I did whatever it took and I'm able to walk and drive, thankfully. Yeah, because you, you, I, I heard that you had that Kunta Kinte's disease. And you know, when you have Kunta Kinte's disease, that's like when you have to say, you know, they say, um, you ain't going to walk no more. And then you say, not only is I going to walk, I going to run. And you did run. Word to Kizzy, you go. The only thing greater than yourself. Go, Carol. Go, Carol. Go, Carol. Go, Carol. Go, 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 Carol. Go, Carol. Go, Carol. I's gonna run. Go, Carol. Go, Carol. Go, Carol. I's gonna run. Go, Carol. Go, Carol. Go, Carol. I was gonna run. I said, I, 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 I gonna run. I, 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 I gonna run. I said, I, 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 I gonna run. I, 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 I gonna run. Run, Carol. Run. Yeah. Okay. If y'all would like to call into the show, you know, add your two cents, make a comment. Make a statement, tell a story. I invite y'all to call in. And the number to call is area code 319 That's the number to call. I said a 319-527-6199. Yes, 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 y'all. I said a 319-527-6199. Dial 319-527-6199. Press number one, and that will let me know that you would like to speak. And then I will call you out by the last four digits of your telephone number. And you can rock out, rock on it, do the, the damn, 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 drip, 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 do the damn thing. All right, y'all. Um, okay. And so Jones says, my sense of humor keeps people from saying anything about my short-term memory. I can dig it. Y'all talking today. <laughs> me talking about when I was talking about the 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 the, the my old head, you know, chasing kids. Yo, I, yo, it was a little too serious. This was the, he wasn't no small man. He wasn't no small man, and he had this. Yo, when he would get angry, he you know how some people are really nice and friend friendly and jovial, and then you know when they get angry, they get this dark look, and it's like a dark cloud for yo. He used to he used to drop the curtain when he used to get angry for real. It, it, it was and he'd be chasing those heads and he cussing at them. Y'all motherfucker, you say something no bum no, I'm fu-. and I'm thinking like, but your boys gotta deal with that when you go home, when you drop them off, they gotta be in their classrooms. <coughs> Recess, gym. You can't stop nobody. You know what I mean? You know, you can't be like, oh, my dad going to get you if you say something. Them, them boys had to fight themselves. So he taught them how to fight. He taught them how to do karate. And it was crazy. It really was. It was a lot to it. There's a lot to it. There's a lot to it. Okay. There's a lot to it. Nora says, I see a disabled guy waiting, um, walking, walking rain or shine every day walking um like handyman and i asked myself how dare i complain Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what a wonderful world i see trees of green okay um terry hawkins says my right eye didn't develop at birth oh okay all right all right stacy white says sometimes god god's cover god covers his people when they have disabilities because of how how cruel the world is. Well, you know, they say that God won't give you nothing that you that you can't um they say not God won't give you nothing you can't stand, but what they say God won't give you nothing that you can't handle. But they ain't say that you was going 
you, you was gonna like handling it. Ain't, ain't nobody said nothing about that. Nobody said nothing like that. Carol talking about some shut it, Omar. I'm just saying. You know what I mean, I make songs for you, and you, you I mean, you acting all funny. All right, Kunta, whatever. All right, uh, Monica Davis says, Carol, <laughs> that tenacity, determination, because you a go getter. That's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> Carol said people say it was because of her hard headedness. Okay, right. So leave them babies alone. <laughs> All right. Carol says, don't mess up one of my favorite songs. <laughs> I'm trying to help. Dealing with your disabilities. Your disability is something you got to deal with, son. You got to deal with. You might talk with a lisp. Um, you know, like I said, you know, we have to talk about mental disabilities. You know what I mean? We all know somebody who is not as sharp as they used to be. It could be because of an accident. It could be because of an injury. It could be because of um, somebody, somebody. It could be because of abuse. How many of y'all know somebody? who was okay until they got shot up. They was never the same again. I mean, plenty of people in a wheelchair, old gangsters in a wheelchair now because they got shot, shot in the back, paralyzed. Now they paraplegic, some are quadriplegic, whatever the case may be. Some of them just ain't right no more. How many people do we know that 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 use drugs and they got they got slipped a Mickey or they or they they shot out now and they they just not the same person that they used to be and they not even on drugs no more but they just aren't as sharp as they used to be they ain't got it like they used to have it's a disability now you know how many people out there are getting a check because of their disability and that's actually the good part and you know and it's actually an interesting part too because on one end you getting paid for your disability and then on the other end you might still be trying to hide that disability so let me get this straight. You getting a check, a nice little healthy check too. Not, not a, you ain't gonna get rich. You know the government ain't gonna make you rich, but you you have enough to pay your bills and maintain and and do your little do your little side jobs and and you know do okay for yourself. But the reason that you you want to still hide from the public the reason that you're getting the check in the first place. So you're ashamed of the reason that you're getting the check, but you ain't turning down that money. S-S-I-S-S-D-S-S-S-S-I-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-
October 18th, and they deserve to be acknowledged. So let's go about our business of acknowledging them and making them feel special because they are special because they are special because they are S P E C I A L. They get the R E S P E C T. They are S P E C I A L. They get the R E S P E C T. They are S P E C I A L. They get the R E S P E C T. They get number one off the box. Charisma Deadman turning 39 years old today. And Trell Thor Thorpe, happy birthday to you. And Angel High turning 52 years old today. And Frederick Dion Minette turning 37 years old today. And Otis, wait, 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 Otis, Otis Nika Ogina, happy birthday to you. And Juana Mercer turning 57 years old today. And Jacqueline Lovett turning 58 years old today. And Christina Bunton. Happy birthday to you. I hope that today finds you all in good health, happiness, mind, body, soul, and spirit. And I want to say happy birthday to all y'all and anyone else out there who shares this birthday when it's glorious, glorious, glorious. October 18th, all y'all go ahead and turn up, turn up. But don't turn up too loud. Just turn up loud enough so everybody can hear you. A rock out, rock on and do the damn, the damn, the rock out, rock on and do the damn, rock out, rock on and do the damn thing. You do your thing, y'all. Represent the queens and kings. You do your thing, y'all. Represent the queens and kings. Good things happen to those who wait. Great things happen to those who grind. And any, any, to any, to uh, anything can happen to those who go for theirs. So go hard, go for yours, and yeah. First of all, make sure y'all hit that like button before y'all get out of here. Make sure that y'all share the show. Make sure that y'all subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet. <laughs> Dealing with your disabilities is something that we all have to do because we all have a disability, whether it's the smallest thing or the largest thing. Shoot, if you get a paper cut, you know how a paper cut is. It's real fine and, and you know, it, 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 it might not even bleed, but it feels so funny. Now you can't touch things. Shoot, if I burn, if I if I drink some tea that's too hot and I mess up my tongue, I consider myself to have a disability. It might be person. It might be a personal disability, but nonetheless, it's, it's, it's inhibiting my ability to be able to enjoy eating or drinking or tasting. It's in the way. And we may be dealing with a whole lot of other ailments physical ailments, mental and mental ailments that are getting in the way. And we have to find a way to get them out of our way. Uh, if we can't eliminate them, we need to find ways to be able to manage them better. We need to find ways to be able to, to live our lives and, and give ourselves a feeling of confidence that we can do things as well as other people can do them and be able to function on a level that makes us feel good about ourselves. There's nothing like feeling good about yourself. I'm, I'm sorry. There's nothing There's nothing like it, baby. Nothing like it at all. But um, we all have to strive to get there. And we're not all going to get there at the same time. We're not going to all get there in the same way. But when we get there, we're going to feel good about getting there. And hopefully, we'll bring somebody up, pull somebody up so they can get there too. Peace to all my day ones, my every days, and my brand news. I love y'all to death. Resuscitate y'all. love y'all right back to life. All right, so blog talk, we gonna get you out of here. Oh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. And for my YouTubers, you know just how we do, but thanks for coming on through. See you on the other side, my boobers. Peace, y'all. Tomorrow, 7 o'clock.